So, so having said that, um, I really want to get your thought on deflation and what you see might come down the pike in, in that respect and how it will affect your rents. Yeah. And, and uh, so I, I think there's a few things and, and listen, I, I took some economics classes, but really, you know, you just look at the market and you understand, you know, uh, how people behave. And sometimes you don't understand how they behave, but like you look at a couple of things that, that are happening in the market. And if you look at history, the American dollar from 1960 to 1990 was devalued based on, uh, um, because of, of um, you know, inflation occurring and everything and, um, and, and coming off the gold standard and a lot of all the other stuff. It was devalued by 75%. Wow. So it, cost, it, it took $4 to buy something that could, in 1990 that took $1 to buy it in 1960, right? right. Wow. So it was devalued by 75%. And then from 1990 to 2020, based on the war on terror and everything else that happened and the bubble, the dot-com bubble burst and then the housing economic burst and everything else that happened, it was devalued by another 50%. Wow. So $2, it's going to cost you in, in, in 2020, $1 in 1990, you know, that would have cost 25 cents in uh, 1960. Wow. So, and then they print a third of all dollars ever made in America last year, right? Yeah. Over the past 12, 18 months. So like, what does that mean? That means there's a lot more supply of money, which means the value of money is going to come down mm -hmm. and there's going to be some sort of inflationary period that we will likely go through. Is that going to happen in the next 12 months, you know, 36 months? I don't know from a timing perspective, but it's going to, it's going to catch up to us. And the only thing that rises with inflation is rents. Rents right. rise the same, the same proportion with inflation and they go up together. So me, as I'm looking at my portfolio and um, my ambitions and what I want to do and stuff right now, I don't, I don't mind debt. I know a lot of people are either pro debt or anti debt or whatever. Like I, I think debt, if you know how to use it, is a phenomenal tool. Right. And so for me, and especially in commercial real estate, you can get non-recourse debt, which is really exciting. For me, I'll go. I'm I'm trying to refinance everything right now. Interest rates are super low. Properties mm -hmm. are are all stabilized across my portfolio. Almost all of them are. Um, and so we're just refinancing everything in a long term, fixed rate debt. Mm -hmm. So that way, between 2021 and 2051, as the dollar is devalued even greater, even more. Uh, I know some people like to, Hey, I want to pay off my property in 15 years. I just want a 15 year mortgage. I'm putting 30 year mortgages on everything. Right. One, cause I'm young and two, because I use cheaper dollars in the future sure. to pay down that mortgage. Sure. That is a fixed mortgage, right? Uh, versus dollars today. That's so right. it allows me more cash flow today. And I, it, economically it makes way more sense to pay it down over time mm -hmm. and to not prepay those loans. Um, right because you use cheaper dollars in the future than what those dollars cost today. So glad that you explained that. There's so many people that don't get that. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that, that having that, that debt is really so helpful for you in the future. Yes. Mm -hmm. And by the way, as your rents do increase over time, so that's only going to increase your margins. Cause again, you're exactly paying it with, your debt steady, right? And your rents keep on going up. Right. Future, that's right. Future payments with today's dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, th the only thing that I caution people on is don't mortgage them to the hilt because you still need to have a bit of margin in there sure. uh, for, for sure. The, yeah, for the just in case situations that come up, and you need to sell the property, you don't want to have to bring cash with you to the closing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's the only downside, and you know, seventy five percent or less in most uh, investment properties. Now, I'm talking about single family houses right now, but 75% or less uh, LTV in a property is going to keep you out of most issues. Cause there mm -hmm. were, there was only a few markets that even in 2008 where the values dropped below 25% of what their original values were. Uh, so that would still keep you above water. Mm -hmm.